right, Matthew, this is another episode of... Ask Go Back Thursday. Good. Now you're going to ask me questions, customer questions right. on your list there. I don't know them. I'm going to be taken by surprise and give you my attempted wise answer. Let's hear them. Okay, here's the first question. It says, how are your pickups wound any differently from Seymour Duncan's? Oh, boy. <laughs> you both have Lisona 102 pickup winders. This is true. But this is true. And Seymour Duncan makes a wonderful product. Great pickups from him. He's a very nice guy. A, a very nice guy, too. He bought a stone bender for me once upon a time. Called me on the phone. And uh, it was pretty cool, really. He even he, like, sent me uh, clips of him playing it. Oh, really? After he, uh, he said, I want a stone bender. I hear you make a good one. Or I, want, I hear you make a good tone bender clone. And I've got Jeff, Jeff Beck's... Uh, uh, is it a Telecaster or a Broadcaster from the Yardbirds? It's a Telecaster, right? I think it's a Telecaster. And uh, he wanted to record some stuff with it. And I said, oh, cool, yeah. We, yeah, we make one. He bought it. And then he he emailed me sound clips of the recordings. Oh, he did. not No video. No video. It was just like, this was but years ago. But it was with ago. Jeff Beck's Telecaster. Yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. But anyway, Seymour has a Lisona 102 that is from the Gibson factory. I have two Lisona 102s, but mine are not from the Gibson factory. So okay. there is a distinction with that. I, although I have two other machines that are from the Gibson factory that were used in the 50s that, uh, that no one else has. So if you're keeping track. You're tied? No, I win. <laughs> or you win. Because I've got two of the ones out of the factory. He's got one. Okay, all right. Sorry. Kind of the, inter the important detail with those machines is just sort of the... Um, the mechanics of the machine. They uh, these older machines do do their own peculiar thing as far as uh, how they lay down a turn uh, a, a traverse, and that's really a function of the the design of the machine. <laughs> Matthew, is there another question? I've got another question. Question is, uh, the harness question, should I change my wiring harness with a and put in a throwback, wiring, a throwback harness? wiring harness? Basically, my recommendation for the wiring harness is, if you have a Les Paul, or let's say an ES335, that's of the era where they are putting 300K pots in it, mm -hmm. you may want to switch because uh, it, the three five, the vintage spec 50s era spec is for 500k pots and a 500k is going to be have noticeably better treble response than a 300k pot so if you want to improve the overall res treble response of the guitar a 50s style wiring harness will, with 500k pots is going to have a better treble response compared to a 300k uh, wiring harness which which uh, for historic les pauls i believe through like 2002 i could be wrong on that number they're going to have 300k pots um and like a es dot es335 i believe those have 300k pots and um beyond that then there's the question of are all 500k pots which is what is this vintage spec for wiring harness are they all produced the same Vintage era 500k pots, the tolerance, there's a plus or minus 20% tolerance for pots. That tolerance tends to fall above 500k in a vintage uh, wiring harness from the 50s or 60s. And I measured quite a few of these, and they pretty universally hmm. fall 500k and above. Right. So that is how our pots are specced. So you, uh, you, the, the pots in our wiring harness are going to be anywhere from... 515, usually more like 520 to 555, uh, kind of right around there. Um, sometimes they fall a little above, a little below. We arrange them in a strategic manner to kind of optimize the response from the harness for the neck and bridge pickup. So we put specific, sort them, put specific values where we, where I think they ought to go. And that will get you the 50s and 60s era spec as far as the tolerance falling above 500k a historic 
uh, Les Paul, I think at some point Gibson has tweaked this in recent years, but pretty universally, all like this guitar, the pots in it are, uh, are going to be like 480 to 460K because their tolerance is falling below 500K. And what I tell people in an instance like that is if you've got a historic and it's got 500K pots and it's 50s wiring, leave it alone unless you want to kind of tweak the edges of the treble response to get a little better treble response. Okay. Because really at that point you're dealing with um, the difference in where this tolerance falls, either above 500K or below 500K. And so a, a Gibson wiring harness is probably going to be below 500K for that tolerance. And ours will just kind of push it up just a little bit so you get a little bit tr better treble response with it. Beyond that... <laughs> Uh, if you get our Bumblebee, our harness that has Lux Bumblebee capacitors, ours are paper and oil. And the Bumblebees in, like this guitar, I haven't switched this out. They are, um, actually this guitar, I don't even have the control cavity on it. But these are, um, these are Gibson's version of the Bumblebee. They're not paper, paper and oil. They're kind of repackaged Mylar film. And, um, they're fine, but they just, they don't quite have the response of a paper and oil bumblebee. So if you're really into the vintage detail, you may want that. You just brought the, 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 the capacitor up, it leads into the second question that I wasn't going to ask, but maybe I'll just ask right now. Is, is another person asked, what is the tonal difference between Lux Bumblebee capacitors versus Gibson oh. Bumblebee capacitors? Okay. So I think you kind of started. Yeah, Lux, uh, Lux Bumblebee capacitors are paper, paper and oil um, copies of the Sprague uh, Bumblebees, vintage ones we all know about. And the tonal response of it, I find, is mylar film, which is what Gibson's is. They put kind of a bumblebee look around a mylar film capacitor. Mylar film has a, I kind of describe it as kind of a com little bit of a compressed, rubbery sort of response. Right. This is very subtle, so I, forgive me my description of it, but I have to kind of put it in terms that make sense to me. Whereas a paper and oil Lux or vintage one, it's it's just a smoother response, even when it's not dialed in, when you're not dialing the tone capacitor into into it. But as you also with a paper and oil, I, I find that if you dial, if you roll the treble off a little bit, you lose a, a little of the harshness of the treble without mudding up the low end as quickly as you do with a mylar film, which okay. is what is in Gibson's uh, Bumblebee capacitors. Although some people like the prefer the sound of a mylar film capacitor, a Black Beauty capacitor is a mylar film capacitor, and very late Bumblebees are. So it really comes down to a personal preference, but I think most people associate a 50s era Les Paul uh, tone with uh, a paper and oil paper capacitor. Oil. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> no, really. Customer asks, can I send my pickups back to have the leads replaced? Mm. I get this question. I do get this question a lot. The answer is no. You can if we, it can be done, but it is more work and time and cost than you're going to want to pay as the pickup owner, and that we're then we're going to do want to do without charging that amount of money. Right. And we're we we are you know in the business of making pickups, not reworking them. Although I do understand why people want them reworked. But I do recommend that people, if they get the pickups from us originally, um, that they save, we put a very long braided lead on it and save the extra. If you do decide you want to put the extra back on it, you can very simply just uh, push back the braided uh, ground shield and then attach, solder the center conductor wires together, 
tape that to insulate it and then bridge the the ground uh, braid with a little wire and solder those on there and it it accomplishes what you need and you're set so just save that extra wire that comes with the pickups there is one exception to this if we get a vintage repair in let's say someone sends a paf pickup in mm -hmm. that needs a repair sometimes that might in, involve uh replacing that braided lead but uh, again with that we're taking the pickup apart as part of a repair yeah for a vintage repair so it makes sense to do that and people are paying for that vintage repair uh, you know a good good sum for that to kind of preserve the the vintage spec of the pickup but in general if it's uh, if it's you know someone who who wants their pickups reworked whether or not we made them or someone else the 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 answer is really pretty much no, no. to that <laughs> Another question. Throwback pickups are only sold at a set on the website. Can I buy a single oh, pickup? Yeah. The, it's true. We do sell them as pairs on the website. And I recommend people buy them that way because what we make as pairs, we, uh, they've been calibrated to work well with each other. Okay. I, the, given that, though, I do, if you want a single pickup, you can email us through the website and we will make a single pickup. Um, and I, I'll just have to send a PayPal invoice uh, after I know what the specs are you want for a single pickup, and um, and you can have have just one if you like. Um, that that's for P90s and PAFs. For Strat pickups, I only sell those as a set. Sometimes I'll do a humbucker single coil single coil set also, so I can do that. Just email me about that. But um, yeah, I can do a single, but uh, and I, two people can mix and match if they want. Sometimes they have people that want a pair, but they want a, to mix and match from different sets. Again, some people have bought enough of a variety of our stuff that they know what they like. Okay. But the pairs that are on the website are calibrated to work well with each other. So I always recommend you know get that if you if you have an if you don't have direct experience with with the the what we make already Okay, Matthew. Matthew, you're looking at your bass. I, we, we have played. Lovingly. We have played a little bit, so we need to uh, talk about the instruments that were in use. Sure. You want to start? Sure. This is a GNL SB1, and I think it's an older body. I think it's two piece, and it has the three bolts, and I believe it's from the early '90s again. Yeah. And I think that this one also has a biflex neck. Where they would, uh, they don't do this anymore, but they would take the neck and um, cut it, flip it, and re glue it. My, my other one has it. I don't oh, know. You if mean, this... So there's a seam in the thing? Yeah. No. I don't know if this neck has it. Yeah, I don't see a seam. But, but anyway, I'll, to, I'll, I'll have to look at so my other the, one. So the neck would have been made out of two pieces? Yeah. And then they huh. were, apparently, if they, they would reverse the wood, glue oh, it back so together. Oh, so it's a way to just make a more stable neck, yeah. then, I guess. And huh. And the uh, rosewood and their... Are, th are these nitro finished? No, I don't no? believe they are. I don't believe. I think it's a polyester. Polyester? Well, it's still nice base. Polyurethane. <laughs> it is nice base. I think it's or MFD. polyurethane, yeah. yeah. Polyurethane. Yeah. Just volume tone. I, they do sound great. I do like those things. And they, they do pick very nice wood for them. 
I've noticed that. Yeah, no, they're they do nice product. Yeah. I like the vintage ones. These well, like, they're getting close to vintage. They're almost thirty years old. What year did you say it was? I think it's. I think this is from the early nineties. All right. Well, very nice. Yeah. All right. Do you want to hear about my yes my gold top? This is a two thousand eight, I believe. Is it two thousand nine? Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Um, R six or fifty six reissue Les Paul historic, and um, I put our. 55, 56 um, SB soap bar pickups in it with uh, lightly aged bone covers on this. It's really nice. It's a nice weight. And, um, but I, I just kept the, uh, if, if we talked about earlier about harnesses, I just kept the, the, um, the, the Gibson Historic harness in it because it sounded fine. And I think the Historic's from about this time 2008 2009 they i think they started coming from the factory 50s wired and um they this i think this era is really nice if you found a used one from this era they 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 seem to be really well made in my opinion they're always really well made but you know the neck shape and the finish and the weight that's all good and is the, is the neck on it like a typical R6? I, I, th I think they vary. They do vary. I think, okay. the, though, generally they tend to be a bit bigger right. for an R6. Just across the board, whenever, uh, depending upon you know, year, they seem to change it a little bit, or who, uh, maybe it's whoever shaped it. But, yeah, it's a bigger neck. It's not humongous, but... I like it. All right, Matthew, that's one more episode of Ask Throwback Thursday. Yes? It is one more episode. Yes. Episode three. Episode three. We we, we can do that many. Well, we've got more, I think. And uh, we included some of your questions in this one uh, that were left in the comments section below. So leave some of your questions in the comments section or email us. We'll be happy to include those if um, uh, Matthew is deems them worthy. worthy. Then they get included. Yeah. So I'm sure any good question is. Yeah, any good question is a good question. Or any question. No, no such thing as a dumb question. That's true. We think. Um, anyway, uh, it, it, thanks for watching. Please click uh, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click the bell for notifications of future shows. And uh, once again, thanks for letting Throwback be part of your search for great guitar tone. <laughs>